Hello and welcome to Endless Mode. I'm Captain Emoji. And I'm Mysterious Gamer X. And we're gonna play some freemium games. Uh, what's this one? Galaxy. Galaxy. Uh, just released on the Nintendo Switch. Sort of just ran into it on the eShop and it looked interesting. Like, I like your space shmup kind of games. Sure. And here's a robot man's and we're gonna go stab some things up. It's very, like, Gundam or suitably mech. I do like all the character art. Like, you can see the pilot in the top right there that you're fighting, and your pilot, who looks kind of like they're wearing, like, a, a Robotech outfit, or Macross if you prefer. You definitely look like you belong to some kind of, like, Federation Space Force sort of affair. Oh, definitely. From what I've seen, it looks like you get, like, a, a lot of close-range stuff with the robot and a shield. And then there's, like, a fighter press, jet, a fighter jet sort of thing. Missiles, yeah. Guns, Robotech missile barrage, and some kind of dodge. <laughs> I really like the special move on the, the mech unit. Kind of reminds me of Zero Wing, which is an old, you know, side-scrolling R-type kind of shooter. And the basis for the ancient, like, are you uh, all your base meme? It was actually a pretty solid game. Just terribly localized. Probably didn't have a budget for it, I bet. If you have to melee ships, being able to, like, grapple punch them is pretty good. I haven't seen you manage to hit a ship with another ship yet, but I'm sure it's possible. Oh, yeah. I have seen you bounce them off of some of the static terrain that damages. Like the big crystal spikes or what. Everything moves around so much, it's a little harder to hit a ship with another ship. A little bit. Plus, they can blow up the ship that you're grappling, so that's also a thing. Ooh, nice. And yeah, even if they hit like a wall or something, it seems like they take a fair bit of damage from it. I dig the regenerating shields. Like, that makes the level a lot more consistent. Like the regenerating armor that became sort of popular, like with Halo and like the developers knowing that you're always going to have a set amount of shields means that they can like tailor challenges to a consistent amount of health as opposed to like the old doom style stuff where they had no idea how much health you'd actually have when you get there yeah so you know it makes for a more a more consistent run and they can play in around that more plus since you have to use the green salvage currency to repair your health bar health bar it's good that you have a meter before that, or I think you'd be, like... Perpetually broke. Right. There's no way that you'd be able to do all of the other, like, systems stacked on top of this game. Uh, the various upgrading and researching and so on. Yeah. Because, like, there's the upgrades that you're working on to upgrade the ship and the robot. And then, you can upgrade the robots too, right? Oh yeah, they get levels. Yeah. Uh, it does have a premium currency, because, well, I mean, the game was free. They gotta make their money somehow. Oh, you finally had to buy the, the health doodad. Yeah. Nice. So now I have more health. But, like, buying that ship part... That cost salvage, didn't it? Mm-hmm. And then repairing the ship does. And yeah, so I mean, if if you had to repair your ship all the time, there's no way any of the other stuff would really work without the premium currency. Well, sure. And I think they, I think a good one of these games has to strike a balance between 
oh, I should spend some money, and oh my god, I have to spend money all the time, forever, or else. <laughs> mm-hmm. And we are still very early on in the game, so oh, the sure. pressure to spend actual currency isn't quite there yet. Right, we haven't hit the, like, the, the extreme paywall. <laughs> like, there's always a point in one of these games towards, like, the middle or end, when they figure that you've gotten suitable buy-in that you're going to be interested in pursuing the rest of the game. Where it becomes more apparent that you might need to, like, pony up some cash. And I'm sure it'll hit that point, but I think if... I think if the journey getting there is enjoyable, it's not quite so bad. Oh, sure. Uh, I guess at that point, the rest of it was kind of a, a demo version of the game. You pay them for a hopefully job well done. I mean, I remember World of Tanks back in the day was pretty good about making the game feel like you could play it without, like, shuffling money at it. And then, you know, I inevitably did because, well, they did good. And I had certainly gotten, you know, retail game cost worth of enjoyment out of it, so I, you know, I bought some extra slots for tanks and, like, a goofy mid-level tank that was fun. Just, you know, sort of a... Yeah, okay, this is worth that much to me. I think if this game manages to hold interest for more than a couple of hours, it, it's it's probably worth, you know, throwing a couple of bucks at to uh, keep the, the pace of the game going smooth, but we'll see. Who knows, we may only play it for, like an hour or two after this and then never touch it again, in which case, maybe not. <laughs> it is interesting to see a lot more, like, free-to-play games popping up on a Nintendo console, though. Oh, yeah. On the 3DS, like, I can only really think of a couple of them. There was, like, that... What was it? Pokemon Rumble? Where it was little toy-shaped mm -hmm. Pokemon? And then, like... Pokemon Picross, and there might have been one or two other ones, but for the most part it was very much like Nintendo or Nintendo adjacent properties without much else going on, so I mean, I guess as they support more indie stuff on their platform, we're probably going to see more free-to-play games. We figured we might check out a couple of them and, you know, see how they uh, how they hold up as far as uh, keeping one's attention. I will say that the controls do seem like they're a little... They're a little wonky, like the original Galaxy. Right. I was gonna say, it definitely seems like everything drifts a bit. And I'm sure part of that's the aesthetic of being in space and what we figure that's like, you know. It does make some of their little uh, hairpin turns a little more uh, difficult. Mm -hmm. Especially in the spaceship, where it seemed like you bounced off a lot of stuff. Oh, just because yeah. it's a bit faster. But I will say it has enough granular meters to keep me entertained. Like everything levels, and yeah. I don't know, there's yeah, something about seeing progress bars fill up that's satisfying in its way. Everything gets experience points. I mean, I'll admit, that was one of the only things that really kept me in the old Call of Duty games, was leveling up the guns to get the, you know, the better guns. <laughs> yeah. So that's Galaxy for the Nintendo Switch. Oh, we hit fill the... some meters, fill some stuff, fill some other meters, spend your money fixing your ship. Okay. So I was wondering why one would pay to expedite the little crate openings, because I was like, well, I mean, nothing in there's necessary. But I see your your slots for crates are full. Yep. Okay. For another four minutes. Huh. 
Well, I don't think we're going to sit and wait for that. So, Probably not. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully this is entertaining. Please like and subscribe if you like what you see. And we'll catch you later.